Tenth of Men's Tears in the year of Our Lady, 1537. I got my first rejection letter this morning. I'd almost forgotten that I'd sent out job applications in the first place. Squirm's quest for her powers has taken up quite a lot of my headspace recently. Anyway, I'd sent this particular application to an enchanter up in the mountains whose particular interest is protective spells. I suppose I should be glad that she had the courtesy to read my application, let alone reply. I knew I'd get a lot of rejections, but it doesn't make it any less dispiriting to get a letter like that. Especially on a day like today. Squirm is insisting we go and visit the Trove this afternoon. I wanted to rest up a bit more, but she's incredibly impatient about the whole thing. I can understand it, though. Must be tough for her being stuck with me, not able to do any magic or even fly. Though, uh, I have to say, even though she doesn't have any magic powers anymore, she's certainly got me under her thumb. I'm not even quite sure why that is. I could squish her flat in a moment, but she knows I wouldn't do that. And she still hasn't let anything slip about her past. Despite all the time we spent together, I find her really hard to read. And if I were to guess why she got kicked out of the Gloomlight Realm, I'd almost certainly get it wrong. But we might be a step closer to getting her powers back, at least if the Trove keeps up his end of the bargain and tells us what he knows. Having the Eye of Agnarhal delivered right to his tree should butter him up a bit. Hopefully. Right, let's get this over with as fast as we can. Come on, Zelda, stop dawdling. Hang on, let me catch my breath a moment. And actually, do we even have a plan for things, I don't know, go wrong? It'll be fine, I'll do the talking. I can be very persuasive. Just stay back, keep quiet, and don't fuck this up for me. Sure, okay, that sounds relatively simple. But are you sure? I'm positive. We made a deal. That giant squirrely bastard has to honour this deal, or else his word won't mean shit with anyone. Just one broken promise is all it takes to become a social outcast. Wow, well, you magical folks don't forgive easily, do you? Why should we? I don't know. There's your answer. Now, get knocking on that tree and stop faffing about. All right. Hello again, Mr. Trove. We're back with your special item. We'd like to come in, please. Is it possible that it's even darker in here than it was the first time? Stop being so bloody nervous, Silda. I've got this. Telling me to stop being nervous won't actually make me any less nervous, you know. That's not how this works. Shush. So, small ones, you have returned. I must say I'm surprised you aren't dead, or at the very least, horribly maimed. Well, we're here, and we've got your bloody eye of Egnahal. Now cough up. How do I get my powers back? I can't possibly give you any information until the eye is in my paws. Now come on, be reasonable. Uh, Silda, show him the eye. So you can see, we have it, but I'd rather not hand it over until we have the information we need. But I want the shiny ball! Give it here, I want it! Now, now, you have to honour our little bargain. How do I get my powers back? Fine. I must admit, I don't actually know exactly how you can get your powers back. You steaming pile of... But, but I know who can tell you. Copa. She's a selkie and she lives on the glittering coast. A small fishing village. She's had plenty of dealings with the fey folk and has quite an extensive knowledge of these matters. There. Now can I have the eye? What's the magic word? Got to be joking. No, I'm deadly serious. What's the magic word? Fine. Please. That wasn't so hard now, was it? Silda, give him the eye. Ah, finally. I have it. 
This is a most auspicious day. The day when I can possess, uh, I, um, uh, communicate with my friends. Yes, c- communicate with, with my friends. Did you just say possess? No, I said nothing of the kind. You must be hearing things. This tree is very echoey. No, you definitely just said possess. Does that mean you're going to take over people's bodies and make them do what you want? No, of course not. That would be bad. Why would you do something like that? Well, I'm not saying I would do something like that. But if I were to possess people, as you put it, I certainly wouldn't tell you my plans. Go away and leave me in peace. Squirm, we can't let him have something as powerful as that. He's clearly going to use it for some selfish reason. I don't give a fuck about that. It's a dangerous world out there. One more maniac with more power than he can handle won't tip the scales that much. There's already plenty of those around. If I have the chance to stop just one power-hungry dickbag, then I will. I can't just stand back and watch him take away people's free will. I'm right over here, you know. And I could possess you and make you fuck off right now. If I could just figure out how to work this damn thing. See, he's massively incompetent. He can't even use the eye properly. You underestimate how much an incompetent person with power can fuck everything up. I've sat through enough Prick Willow Town meetings to know that. I'm going to snatch that thing off him. Don't you dare. I may be terrified most of the time, but in this moment, I do very much dare. Oi, you get that back. Ah! Oh... Silbo, what the Uh, fuck are you doing? I didn't think he'd actually do anything. He may sit on his ass doing nothing most of the time, but when he's angry, there's no telling what he's capable of. Damn right, small one. I'm not going to take any more nonsense from either of you. Now give me back what's mine. Wick gets to the door. He may be big, but he's slow. Okay, okay. Shit. Only the trove can open the door. You'll pay for taking my new toy away. Come on, Silver, transportation spell before he gets close enough to kill us both. Will it even work in here? What if he has wards like the Bureau? Only one way to find out. Flutcher. God damn it. So close. Well, I think it's time for a rage nap. How bad is it? It looks pretty bad, but you'll live. Just need to get to a cleric and prick those sharpish. How will I explain this to my parents? And what do we do with the eye now? That's none of my beeswax. You'll have to figure that out for yourself. Great. Well, at least we have both the Bureau and the Trove after us now. That's a bonus. Oh, shit. Shit is right. But... I was actually kind of impressed how you stood up to the trove like that. Really? Not very impressed, mind you. You got yourself slashed to ribbons and made us a powerful enemy, but it took guts. So, yeah. Thanks, Squirm. (laughs) I think I could probably see my guts if I looked down at... I'd advise against it. Good plan. (laughs) Okay, let's get going. The Temple of Solsetter shouldn't be too far from here. Right, up you get. Chop, chop. Uh, Okay. Squirm. Am I useless? No, not completely at any rate. Um, am I... What? Nothing. Okay, let's go. You have been listening to The Prick Willow Papers, Episode 7, Cunning Plans. This show is a snazzy tapir production. It was written and produced by Maddie Searle and performed by Maddie Searle and Lewis Robertson. If you'd like to support The Prick Willow Papers, follow the links in the show notes to find out more about our Patreon campaign, our coffee page and our merch on TeePublic. We hope you join us again soon.